is to be expected. I don't think everyone's back at their desks quite yet. So let's go ahead and uh, jump on into this thing and take a look at the charts, the market cap, and the news I want to talk about. So here we go. All right, welcome in, guys, to another stream. If you are new to the channel, my name is Rob. Thanks for stopping by. To all the regulars, oh, welcome back. This is Crypto Charts and Chat Live, where we take a look at the crypto charts and talk crypto in general. So before we get into the charts, there is a little bit of news here I want to go over. And that is we, we saw a big movement of XRP. So around 2 billion XRP worth about 775, $755 million was moved into an escrow account. And I believe they were saying this was for XRP's over-the-counter service. So a big movement of XRP's and... Um, you know, that's a lot of money to move with a transaction fee that comes to less than a cent. Moving $755 million with a transaction fee less than a cent. Yes, that that is the benefit of the crypto space. No need for a $10,000 fee to move a million dollars like we see in the traditional SWIFT system. So... Big movement here. I do have a copy of one of the transactions here where we see, what is this, 500 million XRP moved over. So something big happening in XRP over the counter. Something's going on. Um, I'm, I haven't heard too much on it, like what exactly is going on. But um, $755 million, about two... Oh, now they're saying $1.1 billion um, worth of XRP through going through the over-the-counter and escrow wallets of Ripple. So I'm going to be keeping my eye on this for any more concrete evidence that comes out about what exactly this is. But, um, you know, to start off 2019, we're seeing... Big movement, at least as far as Ripple goes. I, you know, I couldn't tell you, <laughs> I couldn't give you another transaction where a billion dollars worth of crypto value was moved. And I mean, for less than a cent, that's, that's, that's the benefit of crypto here, guys. That is what, you know, that's, that's Ripple's whole that's Ripple's whole upside there, being able to move huge amounts of money for very little transaction fees. And, you know, we know Ripple has a bunch of banks and big in institutions on board, though they are extremely centralized. Um, they are one of the projects that are actually have a working product and are doing things in the space and one that I'm keeping my eye on. Now, as far as Ripple goes, I'm still in my Ripple trade from a couple weeks ago, uh, but I just wanted to talk about that big movement and I will be bringing any more solid concrete updates that come out on it I'll definitely be letting you guys know what's going on there because uh, I'm gonna be keeping my eye on it so the overall markets in general where do we stand right now 128 billion dollar market cap Bitcoin dominance ticked down a lot here 51.88 percent um, that might have been where we were last stream around there, but we had been hovering in that 54, 55% Bitcoin dominance range. So definitely pulling back a little bit here, just signaling that strength in altcoins is more prominent right now than the strength in Bitcoin. That's not saying Bitcoin's weak at this point. We'll get into the chart here in a minute. But 24-hour uh, volumes, 5.69 billion. That's a bit surprising to me because we're still seeing though not the spikes in volume we saw still seeing elevated volume comparatively to what we had seen during this sideways 6,000 action we saw 
So it is surprising to see them having 24-hour volume still in that $5 billion range, which seems to be the new normal we've seen here over the last couple months. But in terms of top coins themselves, I mean, look at that. Are we going to get no red? Okay. USDC, uh, stable coin. True USD, stable coin. The only things in the red are stable coins, packs, stable coin, revein. So revein and Gemini dollar, another stable coin. One loser here through the top 50 down 16, over 16% 16 is revein. But other than that, it's been a while since we've seen green like this through the top 50. So at least to start the year here, we're seeing a uh, little bit of upside coming into the top 50 coins. Ethereum making a nice bounce back today, up double digits over 12% here. Uh, through the top five, the majority seem to be in that 4, 5, 7% up range. Uh, SV up 2.5, Tron up 4. So oh, we get some uh, decent size movers through 11 through 21 here. Monero up almost 10. IOTA up just over 9. Um, so nice to see the green in the markets here. And uh, yeah, let's just jump into the into the charts here. Now to start off, let's start with the Dow. Um, let's start with some traditional market action here. So here is the Dow, and if you didn't catch my video from a couple days ago about the correlation between Bitcoin, the VIX, and gold, uh, go check that out. But you know. The gist of it is Bitcoin Bitcoin was created after the last major stock bear market we saw. And the fact that you know the US had to bail out banks and we just the US printed money like like it was nothing. Like it would have no consequences. Like, who cares if it's devaluing the dollar? We're printing money to bail out these banks. That's when Bitcoin was created. And we're starting to see now the signs of real, real weakness in the stock market. And, you know, it, it's warranted. The fact that we're 10 years into a bull run, which is at the upper limit of what history tells us, bull, bull markets and the stock markets tend to last. On top of that, you know, we have a trade war, which whether you want to call it a war or not, it's it's an event that, that's not helpful, that doesn't bring upside to the markets. And we've seen tremendous weakness, though we have bounced back here recently. But as far as where we stand right now, we're running into resistance at the bottom side of this descending channel, which is also representative of the previous low we had, we did have this to start the year uh, last year, the beginning of 2018 through January and the beginning of February, we did have this sell off in the Dow and markets in general. And where we bottomed out there is the 100% Fib retracement, this white line we have drawn across, where we have pulled back up to. And, you know, the, the stock market had acted very technically. We fell right down to the 141. This is just an extension line based off of this Fib retracement, this dotted line from the low here to the high we eventually topped out at in the Dow and pulled back there. So, you know, this is this 100 percent line is a, a key make or break line that will will give us real indication as to whether this bear market is starting from the top we saw here to where we bottomed out down here it was like a 19.37 percent or something like that correction right at that 20 percent bear market correction territory so if we can't find buyers here in the traditional markets and pop back up above this previous low we set and get us back into the channel there is a real risk of this accelerated downside continuing and 
with the correlation we've seen, at least recently, over this the last part here of this downside move, with the correlation we've seen between gold, the VIX, and Bitcoin, if that continues, that's going to be a real a, a good thing for Bitcoin. And just going back to the the image I created, you know, this is a real easy way to understand the blue water here. This is all the money in traditional markets, and this is just U.S. stock market: the S&P 500, the Nasdaq, the Dow Jones. Trillions and trillions of dollars sitting in the market right now, and the bucket is starting to tip. We're starting to see the downside, the end to this bull market. And crypto's down here. This little beaker here sitting at $100 billion. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, all the money in the stock market is going to flow into crypto. Of course it's not. But crypto, if we see the correlation continue between gold and the VIX, it, crypto will be one of the areas that that money flows into, and it's not going to take much. It's not going to take, it's going to take a very small percentage of this capital in here to fill up this beaker. Just because the size, crypto still is. I mean, we're just 10 years into it. We're $100 billion, $128 billion today, total market cap in crypto. Where you look at 7,000 billion, 10,000 billion, 25,000 billion, it's not going to take much of this uh, to fill this crypto beaker up and really get markets cooking back to all time highs again. If this truly is the start of a bear market in the traditional stock markets, which I'll just say it again, you know, it there's real signs and just. All you can look at is history as your guide. We're at the limit. I mean, ten year, we're 10 years into this thing. The entire life of Bitcoin, we've been in a bull market for the, stock, for the stock market. So, you know, it gets me excited because Bitcoin was created out of the whole last crash we've had. And the entire life of Bitcoin, we've been in a bull market. What's going to happen? How, how much capital is going to move into crypto and, you know, the effects, I can't even imagine the effects at this point. Um, but we are starting to see with the correlation between gold, the VIX, which spike, which move up during, during down moves in traditional markets. If that correlation continues, strengthens, it could even weaken. I mean, we're at like 0.8 and 0.77 correlation. It could even weaken. But as long as it stays positively correlated... There is going to be money f from this big bucket flowing into crypto. And, you know, this is only the U.S. stock markets. Yes, you know, the, some of the biggest markets in the world, but there's, you know, multiples of this in capital and markets around the world. And crypto is a worldwide asset, so really there's multiple amounts of these buckets here from stock markets around the world that'll be tipping over and crypto's sitting down here at the bottom and it's little beaker just waiting to catch some of this liquid list some of this liquidity <laughs> all right so yeah i'm you know really what i've been watching lately and what i'm going to continue to watch i uh, i'm keeping an eye on this stock market for sure we're at key levels that will really tell us if this is just a blip, you know, we got, we hit, we hit almost 20% and maybe people are ready to buy this back up again. Um, you know, it, I don't really see what could be positive about, I mean, there's nothing that I makes me want to get into the stock markets at this point, but uh, enough about that. We're here for the Bitcoin in the crypto charts. So here we have, let me get a drink. Bitcoin USD one day. This is the Coinbase chart. I'm going to start out here on the Coinbase chart. And the price action we have seen in Bitcoin. Now, volume has been less than the spikes we've seen the way down here and during this up move. But uh, that, that's to be expected. People still are not at their desks. Um, you know, I'd expect more next week for us to get a better idea about 
how the volume's going to be, what price acceptance is going to be like in these in these levels. Uh, just when more people get back to their desks, it's it's a slow time of year. Uh, you know, we see it go back. We see it every year. Um, where are we at? So here, January first range. You know, there's a clear dip here between Christmas and the New Year's in this range where volumes are decreased compared to what we saw beforehand, what we see afterhand. So, you know, it this uh oh. Frozen. Let me see, are we still up here? Make sure everything's still up. No drop frames. Uh oh. All right, I'm not sure what we're doing here. All right, it appears to be back up now. All right, um, so where was I? So yeah, n normal low volume action in this area, um, but as far as the chart goes, we have Bitcoin maintaining its bullishness here. We broke above the 20 day moving average, this blue line here, the main moving average I use, and we found support there. The, now that we've come down to it, we found solid support, bounced up, erasing all the red losses we saw during this day, pushed us up back above. It's been sideways action since then, but uh, we came down to the 20 May again, found another bounce, erasing all the losses of this red day. And the 20 MA is now swinging up. So uh, the shorter term analysis here from what we're seeing in the price is still bullish on Bitcoin here. You know, there is that one caveat of the low volume. Is this low volume because these prices are too high for people right now? Or is it just people on vacation, people not at their desks? Not the amount of usual trading action we see just based on the holiday season and New Year's itself. But just looking at the chart, this is a bullish pattern we see here holding above the 20 MA. And we're seeing a lot of coins do this. And if we look back through 2018, you know, there's not a lot of times we found support uh, in the bear market here at the 20 MA. Um, you know, there's one clear example here during this bull run that we had off of the 6,000 low here. Pulled back from the upper Bollinger Band, found the low at the 20 MA and made a move, but we're not able to break those previous highs here. Uh, but other than that, there's no real support found at the 20 MA all of 2018. Um, I guess you could say here, but that's, you know, there was no action off of it. So, you know, this is good to see here to start 2019 that um, we are starting to find support at that 20 MA instead of resistance like we saw a lot. Resistance, 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 resistance in um, 2018. So for me, Bitcoin right now at this point, off of the pattern we saw, I mean, this you could even say this is setting up in inverted head and shoulders here with shoulder one, head, shoulder two neckline being right around this level uh which would if that does play out that would push us back up to this 5000 range these previous lows would more than likely be my target on that if we are satisfying this pattern this he inverted head and shoulders here uh but for me I'm still keeping a more shorter term view the trades I am in you know watching them closely keeping stops um, but you know, it, it, it's nice to see that, uh, we're finding support here at the 20 MA. So let me take a look at the chat real quick. Then we're going to jump into some alts. I want to talk about, uh, what's up Zizo Bitcoin heavy morning to you. What's up angry, angry Brit. Happy new year to you. I do recommend the book Bitcoin standard. The first 200 pages. It's about money and economic. Um, crypto world, 
George metal is about to explode. Last time I checked, MTO is not crypto and has no place in here. Let's keep things crypto related. Um, trading view is getting frozen recently on my Chrome as well. I started to use Brave browser. Yeah, this is Brave. Um, I'm on Brave. But, you know, Brave Brave is Chromium, so it's the same same back end pretty much as Chrome, so yeah, I don't know what that freezing was. Rob, get on the BTV Bitstamp M chart. Change to HA candles. It is beautiful. I like. We'll, we'll do a TD cell setup complete. Bitstamp. Monthly. Get rid of the Bollingers. Um, H A candles. Let's see here. Oh, there you go. That is a beautiful, um, nice monthly nine, which, I mean, <laughs> when you can compare the HA monthly candles here on Bitcoin, where, where was the turnaround point? It wasn't the ultimate low, but where did we start moving up from? Last down move we saw, last bear market, it was the nine, monthly nine here on the HA candles. So that is that is very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. All right, let's uh get this back to candles daily and back in the BBs. Okay, any other questions? Just curious why you mostly look at the 20-day moving average. Is it because of the way you trade? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it, it's just a reference point. Um, you know, some people use the 21, some use the 17, the 19, the 13. You know, it, plus or minus a couple on a moving average, it's all the same. Because, you know, more often than not, you don't get perfect touches. So what the 20 MA is showing us here is exactly the same as the 21 or the 19 or, you know, anything in that range. It's it's the exact same thing. It's off, it's off by one candle, but that really doesn't, with the smoothing of the curve, that doesn't change much at all. But, uh, yeah, it's in the way I trade, you know, it... I like to stick to I, I don't like to change up indicators. I like to stick to my indicators and read what they're telling me. Cuz you know, I could throw on a bunch of different indicators here to make a point one way or the other. I'd rather stick to a certain set of indicators and keep using them and interpret them based on, you know, price actions I've seen, pr just experience. And you know, that's why I always like to stick to just the, the indicators I use um, and interpret them. In, interpret them. Okay. It is a national crypto money life. You know, Zcat, you created. God bless the 20th of May. <laughs> the 20th of May. Yes, sir. All right. So let's jump into some other coins here. Uh, since we talked about XRP, let's take a look at XRP. I am still in my XRP trade from uh, back here. So XRP. Staying bullish here. I mean, this one has been... It makes its journey down to this lower trend line every once in a while. But more recently here, we've been holding the 20-day moving average cleanly. 
every time we get down there, it holds, showing that the Bulls are still in here and didn't get much upside off of the um, this line we saw or I was tracking here. I mean, we did push up. About a 20% gain, uh, but I didn't. I didn't book profits. I'm still in this, and it's building now. Now we have this line coming across here, setting up the upper side of the triangle. Well, so really we can just look at the nine, the green dotted line coming in. This is still building in a bullish pattern, and I'm still holding on to my XRP at this point. You know, the, the Bears just can't get in anywhere. They take it to the 20MA, and that's it. They either give up or there's enough bulls there to turn us around. This is still... I'm still holding on to this in the longer scheme of things. Um, you know, still really bullish. It has these really rounded bottom patterns we've been seeing. Um, and holding holding in the ascending triangle pattern we see, we're seeing and still holding on for a, a big break and with the bullishness we've seen especially when most of the market was turning down ripple here was just going sideways so really for me this is more just this is a trade coin um you know i do think that during the next bull run we see big upside in ripple just because it's it's had that pattern and there's you know a cult-like following for this coin uh, but Ripple is definitely one of them. I know I mentioned Waves a couple days ago. And this was setting up in a real nice bull flag pattern here coming down to the 20MA. Found some support off of it, but we've rejected back below again. Um, so not as much strength to get me confidence to jump in this at this point. I still want to see it find a solid bottom. Uh, but definitely still a coin that I'm interested in with that $120 million in private equity coming into this project, which represents about, I think, a quarter of the total market cap of this coin. Um, still so, still want to keep my eye on there. Um, let's see. Let's talk EOS. EOS also looking very bullish as well. Pulled up above its 20MA here on the daily. Came down, found support at that level, and we're sent building back up again to these these spikes. We see this high level, and it looks that um, you know bullishness is still just creeping in. And once we get a break somewhere of these highs, this looks like it wants to take another move back up to the previous levels we had here on EOS now that a lot of the FUD that we saw when we saw this major just major bleed to the downside a lot of the FUD is well I wouldn't say gone but you know it it's minimized a lot compared to <laughs> compared to what we had back here um, definitely looking bullish here still holding my EOS though I am moving about 10 to 20 percent of my EOS into a few other coins I'll get into that I'm gonna do a th think a separate video on that um, but you know I'll just say I'm not leaving the EOS IO ecosystem the code is what I believe in it's fast free transactions uh, but I am moving some of my EOS token into other EOS IO coins so let's see what do we got in the chat hello Gabby what do you think about Telos, TLOS? Well, <laughs> uh, just go back to what I just said. Moving some of my EOS into other EOS IO coins. So that should give it away. Rob, LTC and W chart it is looking good. Yeah, I'm just not, I'm not the LTC fan. Weekly. Let me get rid. Oh, if I get rid of Bollinger Bands, it's gonna get rid of the twenty. You know, for Litecoin, it'll be interesting to see if this nine we bottomed out at here on the weekly, which 
you'd expect to turn around at that point of one to four candles. One, two, three, four. We're at that fourth candle now off of this nine. So this could just be relief off of this nine. Um, LTC to me, you know, it's... I don't know. I just don't see what there is to like about it. If it's, you know, it's, it's a, it's Bitcoin code pretty much. If, if I was going to be in Litecoin, I'd rather just be in Bitcoin. Um, yes, it's a different algorithm, different supply. You know, it, it, it's in the beginning, it was silver to Bitcoin's gold. Um, but you know, it, it, to me, there's just not much in Litecoin to to get me excited. Um, especially Charlie Lee selling all his, you know, ever since that point, it just, it, I've been really turned off from Litecoin. But if we can get more continuation past these four bars off this nine, um, this could be a solid bottom for Litecoin itself. That being said, it's, it's probably more than likely not one I'm going to be getting into for sure. I mean just not not that interested in Litecoin. Okay. Is it sorry what's your thoughts on proof of keys and hit BTC blocking withdrawals? Yeah, I'd be scared if I was on hit BTC. I mean if any exchange should have the funds to cover every user's deposit. And if you're freezing accounts during the proof of keys to, I mean, why would you need to do that unless you were worried everyone was going to withdraw and you wouldn't have enough funds to cover everyone's withdrawal. So I'm not on hit BTC. If I was, I would be worried. Um, and you know, I, to me, there's just no legitimate reason for them to freeze everyone's withdrawals during proof of keys. If you got if you got the funds, if you got one Bitcoin for every Bitcoin deposited and one altcoin for every altcoin deposited, there's no reason to freeze that stuff because you're worried about everybody withdrawing. Um, so, you know, it, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth. And if I was on hit BTC... I wouldn't be getting on to hit BTC, and if I was in hit BTC, I'd be trying to get my funds off. It's just not not something you'd expect from a legitimate exchange. If they do block, they must be doing some fractional reserve trade. Yeah, it, it it's worrying, you know. It's it's. <laughs> I feel bad for anyone who does have their funds frozen right now there. I think they don't have the money. Hit BTC is a scam exchange. Yeah, I, you know, it's not an exchange I've ever used. It's definitely not an exchange I would use, especially now because of this. So, hopefully, nobody here has any funds on Hit BTC. I'm hoping. Um, if you do, man, you know, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. ETH, please. All right, let's take a look at ETH. Um, let's look, let's do USD value on ETH. Get back off the weekly. And add in BBs. So ETH seeing, you know, we've seen good upside in ETH here. I mean, ETH, <laughs> ETH was the one that really just bled and bled and bled. I mean, this is, uh, that might be as, oh, no. I mean, it, it bled and bled and bled. And we're finally seeing some upside here with a nice V. It's a nice V bottom we're seeing in ETH. Volumes coming back in after we saw big volumes on the way down here. We got volumes coming back into ETH. So, ETH definitely does not look as dire as it once did. You know, for me, 
as a DAP platform until they they can scale. Um, you know, it's they're just running at full capacity now, and that full capacity is a fraction of what EOS and these other DAP platforms are doing. And you know, EOS is at you know two percent utilization or whatever it is, and Ethereum's maxed out. And the thing that you know rubs me the wrong way about ETH is they've had these scaling solutions and we've heard about proof of stake and all these things for so long and it's just it's still not there they're not doing anything yet um and you know the, got a fork this date updating the code on this date you know we've we've heard that before we've heard <laughs> it so many times now i'm not going to believe it until it actually happens with eth but uh you know, I'm not as negative on ETH as I once was. I, I thought ETH was just totally dead. Um, it's found some buyers in here. And if they do scale, if they do get the, the scaling solutions in place, it's definitely a decent platform. I mean, as an ICO, through 2018, ICOs were dead, so ETH took the big hit. But if we ever see another run in ICOs, I do foresee you know, a good portion of ICOs being done on Ethereum again, just because they have the model. We saw 2017, and for that case, the beginning of 2018, um, ETH is a good platform for doing an ICO, raising ca crypto capital. But as a DAP platform, it's lagging so far behind. I know I have pretty much... All of my ETH tied up in Ethereum games at this point, and the dividends I earn from those games, and you know, summer taxes for like um, city city type games, the taxes I earn daily from those games, it costs me more to send the transaction to claim those dividends than it those actual dividends are worth. So. You know, fees fees are bad. Fees are real bad on Ethereum right now. And until until there's a solution, until they actually implement a solution for that, I don't have a lot of high hopes for ETH. Um, but as as an ICO fundraising platform mechanism to raise crypto funds through an ICO, I still believe they do have a place in the crypto sphere for that. And it's a big it's a big name brand. It's the first first mover dap platform um just like bitcoin's a first mover you know there's there's always gonna be hype and fanboys and there's always gonna be a place for it uh where that place shakes up and at you know whether they're at the number two spot or if eventually they fall to like the 10 spot or something remains to be seen but they do have they need to fix the scaling problems for sure all right. ETH was subject to mass dumping of funds by ICOs from 2017. Yeah. Well, I mean, in th that's going to be the cycle, you know. If 2017, ETH had a huge run-up because everyone was running an ICO, so all private investors wanted to buy ETH to get into ICOs. We see a huge run up in the price of ETH. But then at the top here, and when the ICO market started to cool off, now we have just a bunch of projects with all their capital in ETH and no one buying ETH to put them into ICOs. So we see projects start to sell the ETH and there's not the same demand that pushed us, you know, in the beginning here, 2017, demand definitely outweighed the supply because everybody wanted to get into an ICO. But then we had all the ICOs and there was just a huge supply of ETH because all the ICOs had their funds in ETH. And so in order to sell every month to keep things afloat or to develop, um, you know, it really brought downside pressure to ETH. Um, so, you know, it makes sense. It makes sense what, what went on in ETH here. Um, you know, it, which, you know, could be a, could be a great thing if you, pl if you played it right. 
if you got into ETH before the ICOs and sold out at the peak of ICOs, you made a killing. And you could get back in at, you know, a tenth of the price here. What do you think about XLM? Let's take a look at XLM. XLM's always on my radar. All right. So XLM here, I mean, since May, since May has been in this this range. We go down to the bottom of the range, we push up to the top of the range, down to the bottom of the range, up to the top of the range. Not quite to the bottom of the range, but back up to the top of the range. We're back down at the bottom of the range again. Uh, we had a perfect touch last time here of that range level and got the bounce, but we could not push through the 20 moving average, which the level also corresponded here with the purple line, which was the low we bottomed out at here. Uh, we had some support here. So it's still bearish looking here for XLM, at least from a trading perspective. Uh, but the fact that the volumes came in here, we saw good volumes on the way up here. On this last way down, less and less and less volume. So it's not like people are panicking in selling, just hitting the sell button. You know, historically, this level here has been the opportune spot to buy. Uh, but we're seeing good resistance up here. So XLM, just based on where we are, we're just a little bit off this low level line, is definitely something I'm keeping my eye on closely. Um, you know, it is concerning the resistance coming in here, but it is nice to see that the volumes during this last price action down here in this lower level, the volumes came into the upside, and so far to the downside, it's really just been dying, dying, dying volume. So that's definitely bullish from that standpoint. Um, but I'd like, like to see another candle confirmation or, you know, some signs that this latest down move has bottomed out before I get in. But it, based on what we've seen for the last six plus months, this is the opportune spot here um, for the XLM Bitcoin trade. So definitely one for sure. I mean, I'm a, I always keep my eye on XLM. It is um, definitely on my list. All right. Uh, so definitely feel a little bit rusty here. Oh, still in that coma from all the food. Guys, if you haven't updated, if you're not on Brave Browser, first link in the description, get on Brave Browser, start earning crypto for watching streams like this, just browsing the internet. But the latest release has some nice updates here. The button up here with the Brave triangle here is the Brave Rewards. So if you do want to tip the channel, you sometimes get a free monthly bat to send to creators. You can either send a tip and the tip banner will come up and you can send an amount. Or you can click it into Auto Contribute. And this will every month just contribute some of the funds to the channel if you want to support the channel that way. It's a nice free way to support the channel. Also, the latest update did bring in the section for getting paid for viewing ads. Though it is not available yet, it should be coming real soon. So if you want to view ads in the normal places you would view ads on any other browser, except earn 70%, I believe it is, 70% of the revenue from those ads go to your crypto wallet. It just makes sense to me. I mean, if you're on Chrome, Firefox, any of those, you're already looking at ads. If you're looking at CoinMarketCap or any of these sites, you know there's 20 ads per page. So if you want to get 70% of that revenue from those ads, definitely do it on Brave Browser. Now, of course, there's always the option to look at no ads, which you can, if you don't want to see ads and don't get, pay, don't get paid for them, just don't choose the option to get paid for ads. You never have to look at ads again with Brave Browser. But definitely if you're not on Brave Browser, it's over 4 million, 4.4 million, I forget what it is now, active users on Brave. It's one of the crypto projects that is actually doing something and seeing good adoption and ever since switching to brave you know it's it's a, it's a totally different experience it's based on the chromium code so it's just like chrome but 
fast, secure. I mean, I don't even know. This is the latest release. How much time has it saved me so far? Not much. So I've only been using this a couple days now. So only 18 seconds saved from blocking, you know, tracking ads and stuff. Um, but this adds up quickly over time and saves you a lot. Blocks ads, blocks trackers, safe, secure. You earn crypto for browsing. Um, I'm definitely a Brave fanboy. So first link in the description. If you're not on Brave yet, check it out. Okay. QKC. Can't figure out what the large money coming in is waiting for with these lows. You would think some mass amounts would trickle in. Uh, you know, they're waiting. They're waiting for an easy avenue to get in. You know, and that's really, I mean, with the government shut down right now, of course, backed is going to be pushed back. So, you know, they, these are big, these are big players with investors funds. So it's not like any of us who could just take the risk of going on an exchange and putting our capital on it to trade, make trades. These people have guidelines and rules. They're using other people's money. So really, that's why I think backed is so big because all these big institutions and stuff are already on the New York Stock Exchange, are already dealing with ICE, the people who are bringing out the backed exchange. So there's already that comfort level there, and I ICE has the the track record running the New York Stock Exchange that uh, they're legit. Um, so really that... The on-ramp to get in for bigger money players is, at this point, I see what's holding them back. And, I mean, we're what? We're... <laughs> it's January 2nd. We're two days into the new year. So, there was those those institutional players or those hedge funds, big money that was already in crypto through 2018. Uh, you know, a lot probably here towards the end took profits if they were in profits, got out and took profits just for the end of the year to show that they made a profit, get that yearly bonus, get them upgraded to that corner office, whatever. Um, but yeah, you know, volume's still low here. I don't expect much volume till about next week, uh, really, once things get back into the swing of things. But um, this, this does... This does have me excited for 2019. If if this is really starting to fall apart here, um, I think we see see this accelerate those big monies coming into crypto because they didn't have a reason before. They were just sitting in their stock market, you know, ten years of a bull run. They're just sitting in their stocks and making their ten percent a year, twenty percent a year, whatever. It's completely satisfying their investors, you know, sitting there doing nothing. But uh, things changed here towards the end of the year, and this could be one of the biggest factors that drives the movement of big money into crypto. Okay, Let's see, Zizo says they have to come slowly or the price would skyrocket. Remember, only 3 to 4 million of the 17 million BTC are. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, that's, you know, that's that's definitely part of it. There's, they want to they wanna pack their bags fully before the price gets crazy. And if they throw 100 million, throw a billion throw 500 million whatever they're going to throw in here at one time i mean bitcoin's going to be a hundred thousand before the next day you know we're still dealing with the entire crypto space is a hundred and thirty billion dollars so <laughs> it, it, it's not going to take much just going back to this picture i mean this is just money in the u.s not even counting the the russell this is what we see in the stock markets right now. It's not going to take much to start exploding the price 
and you know these big players want to get in, which is why we see a lot of them do over the counter trades, want to get in all at the low price. If they start throwing in big orders on the exchange, we're gonna see skyrocketing prices just because of the low supply. I mean, it's supply and demand. If a huge amount of demand comes in with the low supply, even if all 21 million were traded right now, that's still a low supply. All right, guys. I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Feels nice to get back onto a stream. Um, you know, it, I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do for 2019 in terms of the channel. Um, you know, it just gets hard when you get subscribers from trading videos and then I do how-tos or different videos and I lose those subscribers and vice versa. I get subscribers from those videos and then once I do a trading stream I lose those subscribers. So I am really considering splitting up what I do into different channels. Have just trading on one channel and then maybe crypto news, how-tos on another channel. Um, just because it gets hard, you know, you gain 10 subscribers in a day off of a trading video, then the next day I do just a news video or a how-to video and I lose half of them. Um, I appreciate you guys that do stick around, even if, you know, those of you that just like trading or like the other videos, one or the other, you do stick around through the others. You just don't have to watch them if you don't want. No reason to unsubscribe, but there's a lot of people out there that do. And, you know, the channel's grown a lot slower than it should have because, I believe, because of that reason. But I do appreciate everyone who sticks around and joins me on these streams and uh, drops likes and checks out the others as well. Let's do this one last coin here. Q. I think it's a coin. Quark coin. For a Holger. Don't know much about this. Other than it's had a uh, mighty fall from its listing here on Binance. Yeah, as far as where we sit now, this bearish to me. Um, we did have this nice rejection here. No real volume signs at all. Only got two days of upside action. Couldn't even get up to the 20 MA before it started falling away again. Um, yeah, not much of a spike in volume to the upside here. This still looks bearish to me. Just a quick analysis on Q QKC for you guys. But yeah, uh, other than that, I think that's going to wrap it up for me. I got many videos in the works. I want to talk about my favorite coins for this year and really my game plan uh, from, for this year for here on out about what coins I'm going to be holding and really my ideas of what I'm going to be trading and stuff like that. So between... Between planning new videos and figuring out what I want to do with the channel, uh, got a lot to figure out here, uh, but I'll still be coming on here, guys. So definitely, if you are new, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And if you did enjoy this stream, you do enjoy these streams, you enjoy the channel, drop a like, share it on Twitter, Facebook, whatever you want to share it on. It goes a long way to helping out the channel. Check out the link to the Discord in the description below. Pop on there, say hello to the community, talk crypto while we're not on stream. But other than that, that's going to do it for me for this one. Hope you guys had a great New Year's and great holiday season. I will uh, see you guys in the next one. And as always, stay living that crypto money life.